welcome to my channel in this video we will discuss vitreous and its pathologies uh, it is a long video so be patient and see the whole video to learn vitreous completely what is vitreous vitreous humor is an inert transparent jelly like structure that fills the posterior four fifth of the cavity of the eyeball posterior four fifth of the cavity of the eyeball is occupied by vitreous and it is four milliliters in volume four milliliters in volume it is a hydrophilic gel that mainly serves the optical functions in addition mechanically stabilizes the volume of the globe and is a pathway for nutrients to reach the lens and retina it also provides the refractive surface structure the normal youthful vitreous gel is composed of a network of randomly oriented collagen fibrils interspersed with numerous spheroidal macromolecules of hyaluronic acid the collapse of this structure with age or otherwise leads to conversion of the gel into sol the vitreous body can be divided into two parts first one is cortical vitreous and the second one is main or vitreous body or nucleus first one is cortical vitreous that lies adjacent to the retina posteriorly and lens so it lies adjacent to the retina and lens so it is the peripheral part of the vitreous the density of collagen fibrils is greater in this part the condensation of these fibrils forms a false anatomic membrane which is called as anterior hyalide membrane anterior to the aura serrata and posterior hyalide membrane that is posterior to the aura serrata the anterior hyalide membrane is attached to the posterior lens surface in the young and it is weak in the elderly whereas posterior hyalide rem uh, membrane remains loosely attached to the internal limiting membrane of the retina throughout the life these membranes cannot be discerned in a normal eye unless the lens has been extracted and posterior vitreous detachment has occurred second part is main vitreous or nucleus the main vitreous body or nucleus is a lens dense fibrillar structure and is a true biological gel it is the site where liquefactions of the vitreous gel start first microscope microscopically the vitreous body is homogeneous but exhibits wavy lines as of watered silk in the slit lamp beams running down the center of the vitreous body from the optic disc from the optic disc to the posterior pole of the lens is the hyaloid canal cloquets canal so it is like this consider this is a eyeball here this is optic disc here you can see this is lens from the from the optic disc to the posterior pole of the lens from the optic disc to the posterior pole of the lens runs a canal and this is called hyaloid canal it is also known as cloquets canal down this canal runs the hyaloid artery of the fetus the part of the vitreous about 4 mm across the aura serrata is called as vitreous base where the attachment of the vitreous is stronger the other firm attachments are around the margins of the optic disc here foveal region and back of the crystalline lens by hyaloido capsular ligament of wigger here at this site ligament of wigger is present that attaches the vitreous to the lens posterior surface of the lens vitreous liquefaction what is vitreous liquefaction it is also known as cyanokinesis cyanokinesis or syncytosis vitreous liquefaction or syncytosis is the most common degenerative change in the vitreous 
causes of liquefaction include age related that is senile myopic and that associated with retinitis pigmento pigmentosa after any inflammatory condition for example uveitis after uveitis trauma to the vitreous such as blunt or perforating trauma thermal effects for example diathermy photocoagulation and cryocoagulation and radiation effects also cause liquefaction clinical features on slit lamp biomicroscopy the vitreous liquefaction synchysis is characterized by absence of normal fine fibrillar structure and visible pockets of liquefaction associated with the appearance of coarse aggregate material which moves freely in the free vitreous liquefaction is, uh, is usually associated with collapse synapses and opacities in the vitreous which may be seen subjectively as back floaters in front of the eye vitreous detachments second pathology one posterior vitreous detachment pvd it refers to the separation of the cortical vitreous from the retina anywhere posterior to vitreous base 3 to 4 3 to 4 mm wide area of attachment of vitreous to the aura striata posterior vitreous detachment with vitreous liquefaction synchysis and collapse synapses is one is of common occurrence in majority of the normal subjects above age of 65 years so it is a condition that mostly occurs in the senile liquefaction developing a hole in the posterior hyoid membrane the synchytic fluid collects between the posterior hyoid membrane and the internal limiting membrane of the retina and leads to posterior vitreous detachment up to the base along the along with collapse of the remaining vitreous gel synapses here i am trying to show this to you consider this is eyeball this is retina up to this point aura up to this point this is aura serrata this is aura serrata this is lens this area is vitreous here vitreous attached with the lens through vigor ligament here with the aura serrata here with the aura serrata and here with the retina so in case of accumulation of synchytic fluid here when synchytic fluid accumulates here then it pushes the it pushes the vitreous away from the away from the retina it pushes the vitreous away from the retina and therefore vitreous detachment occurs here this fluid accumulates and pushes the vitreous away from the retina and vitreous detachment occurs these changes occur more frequently in the afx than the fx in the myops these this condition also develops as compared to the emetropes clinical features flashes of light and floaters are seen examination of the vitreous reveals a collapsed vitreous synapses behind the lens and an optically clear space between the detached posterior highlight phase and the retina a ring like opacity v's ring or fuchs ring representing a ring of attachment of vitreous to the optic disc is pathognomonic of pvd complications of pvd these include retinal breaks vitreous hemorrhage retinal hemorrhages and cystoid maculopathy detachment of the vitreous base and anterior vitreous it usually occurs following blood trauma and it may be associated with vitreous hemorrhage anterior retinal dialysis and dislocation of crystalline lens but it occurs not too much frequently as compared to the as compared to the posterior vitreous detachment vitreous hemorrhage now we call we will come to the vitreous hemorrhage that usually occurs from the retinal vessels and may present as pre retinal subhyoid or an intragel hemorrhage the integral uh, sorry the intragel hemorrhage may involve anterior middle posterior or the whole vitreous body causes causes of vitreous hemorrhage are as follows spontaneous vitreous hemorrhage from retinal breaks especially those associated with posterior vitreous detachment 
trauma to the eye, inflammatory diseases such as uveitis, vascular disorders, for example, hypertensive retinopathy, central retinal vein occlusion. Because central retinal vein occlusion leads to neovascularization, metabolic diseases such as uh, diabetic retinopathy. It also leads to neovascularization, blood dyscrasias, for example, retinopathy of anemia, leukemia, polycythemia, and sickle cell retinopathy. Here you can see vitreous hemorrhage in the vitreous humor, and it is one of the, the common causes of sudden ans sudden blindness. Clinical features, symptoms, sudden development of floaters occurs when the vitreous hemorrhage is small in massive vitreous hemorrhage patient develops sudden painless loss of loss of vision blindness uh, is not a correct word we can see uh, sudden painless loss of vision signs distant direct ophthalmoscopy reveals black shadows against the red glow in small hemorrhages and no red glow in a large hemorrhage direct and indirect ophthalmoscopy may show presence of blood in the vitreous cavity and ultrasonography with B scan is particularly helpful in diagnosing vitreous hemorrhage. These are signs. What is the fate of vitreous hemorrhage? It may be completely absorbed without any organization and uh, vitreous becomes clear. Organization of hemorrhage with formation of a yellowish white debris occurs in persistent or recurrent bleeding and complications like vitreous liquefaction, degeneration and hockey cell Glaucoma in aphakia may occur. Retinitis proliferance may occur, which may be complicated by tractional retinal detachment. So, tractional retinal detachment may be the complication of vitreous hemorrhage. Treatment Conservat Conservative treatment consists of bed rest, elevation of patient's head, and bilateral eye patches. This will allow the blood to settle down. Treatment of the cause So, treat the underlying cause, for example. An indirect of thelmoscopy should be performed to locate and further manage the causative lesions such as retinal break, phlebitis, proliferative retinopathy, etc. And vitrectomy by pars plana route should be considered to clear the vitreous if the hemorrhage is not absorbed after three months. Surgical removal of the vitreous is now a uh, an infrequently performed procedure. Types are anterior vitrectomy, core vitrectomy and subtotal and total vitrectomy. Techniques Open sky vitrectomy This technique is implied to perform on the anterior vitrectomy and it is indicated when there is vitreal loss during cataract extraction, affected keratoplasty, anterior chamber reconstruction after perforating trauma with vitreous loss, removal of subluxated and anteriorly dislocated lines. Here you can see it is a procedure, surgical procedure called vitrectomy. Surgical technique. Open sky vitrectomy is performed through the primary wound to manage the disturbed vitreous during cataract surgery or FAK keratoplasty. It should be performed using an automated vitrectomy machine. However, if the vitrectomy machine is not available, it can be performed with the help of a triangular cellulose sponge and devecus scissor. Sponge vitrectomy. It is called sponge vitrectomy. Closed vitrectomy. Pars plana vitrectomy. Pars plana approach is implied to perform core vitrectomy, subtotal and total vitrectomy because it is least vascular area and uh, of the uh, ciliary body and therefore uh, uh, weak approach through this area to perform vitrectomy. Indications are endophthalmitis, vitreous hemorrhage, proliferative retinopathies, uh, retinal detachment, retinal dialysis, etc. Removal of intraocular foreign bodies is also done through this. Removal of drop nucleus. For example, if you implant an intraocular lens and if it drops, then intraocular lens is removed, uh, the drop nucleus uh, or the dropped intraocular lens is removed from the vitreous cavity through this surgery and persistent primary hyperplastic vitreous is also uh, managed by this surgery vitreous membranes and bands are also done this through this so this is all about vitreous